Good morning. This is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com. Today is Monday, March 30th, 2015. And this morning I wanted to do a quick bit on uh, something that's been on my mind. And that is the uh, ever-present problem of fakes uh, in the Chinese porcelain category. It's in all categories, but today we're going to talk about porcelain. Uh, pouring out of mainland China, being put on the market on eBay in China, appearing here in the United States in auctions, and it's become a ridiculous situation, <laughs> frankly. It has been for a while. This morning there were over 300,000 items listed under Asian antiques on eBay, and uh, we all know that the authentic number is probably close to around 5% of that or less, and many of them are not worth looking at. But what I want to take a look at with you this morning is uh, some of the things to watch out for uh, with mainland Chinese fakes. And always look at these things that you see on eBay, um, uh, imagining that they were to appear at a local auction or in a group shop or uh, you know something like that here in the States. It's illegal to export antiques out of China. Basically anything over you know 75 or 100 years old is strictly forbidden. And uh, guys in China that come up with good objects don't put them in auctions on eBay. They don't try to because they could lose them uh, confiscated by the government. They sell them through Polygroup or Guardian or some uh, inside the country uh, operation. What's happening though of course is that a lot of these are getting sold. This fellow has quite a few of them. A lot of them are obviously fakes. Like this dragon vase here, this dragon vase there. The Buddha is ridiculous. This thing is horrifying. That yellow Mei Ping with the uh, Ming mark on it. But we're going to look at a few of the ones that he, this guy has up that are um, the ones that are the real problems that do turn up in America on these ab absurd tiles. Tiles have become very big business over there. We're going to start with this vase first. This type of vase was made during the Guangxu period and a little before. It's a fairly well known pattern, bats and clouds. Uh, the first thing you want to look at is the bats. Okay, let's blow it up. The bats are very stiff and repetitious. Look at the bats excluding everything else around them. And they just uh, look like little stamped on copies. They're probably not stamped on. They could be stamped on with some sort of tracing uh, gizmo, but I think they're just, just, just drawn on by somebody that has no imagination. Um, the same thing with the clouds. They're all sort of splotchy. There's no, you know, very neatly segregated from the other pieces, but they're, they're just not proper. There's the bottom part of it. Uh, this fellow's camera, a little bit of lens distortion, so it's hard even to tell what the sh real shape on this is. When you look at the base, this is what you're seeing a lot of these days. These Guangxu vases are turning up everywhere. Um, because they're easy to fake, they're easy to copy, the technology they're using in, in, in China today hasn't changed a whole heck of a lot from then. The decoration is easy to do, and the mark, of course, is, you know, easy to replicate. Why not? And uh, we're going to flip over here to uh, the next piece up. Is this Mei Ping base? We have another Guangxu piece coming. This is this is trying very desperately to be a Kangxi vase, Mei Ping, with the uh, pomegranate fruit, and the these sort of odd-looking chimeras in this this interpreted uh, uh, cartouche frame here. Um, flip up this. There's the top. Now, if you look at this, if you've seen any of these Kangxi vases, you've never seen one that looks like this, but that some of the uh, patterns and uh, decoration you have seen. The first thing you want to look at is look how stiff it is. All of it is too stiff, too repetitious. This this work here, try to look at that separate from the rest of the piece. The way these are done, the flowers, the little cartouches, it's all too stiff, too, too contrived looking. And then when you flip the vase over and you look at the base, you see this, the foot rim. These feet are often um, ascribed to being you know, oh, it's late 19th century. No, it's not. That's what a brand new foot looks like on porcelain coming out of Jing Chen. And uh, it's got this brown dirt ground into it. It has sort of a sugary texture to it. The mark is okay. Uh, the rain marks and Kangxi marks are always variable, even on authentic pieces. Oop, he didn't take a very good picture of that. But so you want to look at that foot. That foot is sort of rounded and 
sugary looking and just browned. You have this terrible decoration on the vase. Stay away from it. You always think if you came across that at a, at a yard sale at a local auction, what would you think of it? You'd probably like it. Next is this. This is a very famous type of Kung Shi vase with a dragon on it. It's a Mei Ping again. Mei Pings are fairly popular these days uh, with the dragon. The first thing that should strike you is the body. The body is not white enough. It has sort of a very decidedly bluish cast to it. The tail of the dragon is not the way it should be. It, it, it looks sort of uh, 20th century. <laughs> um, the dragon's head, um, the expression is a bit off. The whiskers are, are a bit wrong. Um, the heaping and piling effect that they attempted on here um, it looks contrived. Uh, and then you have this foot. Again, that rounded foot with the dirt all ground into it here, here, on this side. You see it everywhere. It's not a nicely shaped foot. And it's uh, not white enough. Kung Shi paste tended to be extremely white uh, because the clay was so well levigated and clean when they fired it. There were very few imperfections in the clay. So it tended to be extremely white. Uh, and this is not a late 19th century PC either. Okay, Though somebody might try to sell it as such. All right, here's another fun. This is another Guangxu vase, also copying a period one. Uh, not very well copied. The drawing is, again, too stiff, too static looking. Uh, the colors are uh, an approximation of what they should be. Colors are hard to tell on here because cameras uh, vary a great deal, and some of them aren't white balanced all that well. Here's the foot. Okay. What do you see first? The first thing you see that's wrong on this vase is is this this brown gunk done to uh, the foot. It's applied to the foot and then scraped off and rubbed in and scraped off and rubbed in. It's around the inside, and that's sort of a, an attempt to simulate wear from having been on a brown wooden stand. And often they apply this this reddish goo to the inside hoping to get you to think it's a result of the firing where the iron oxide reacted uh, inside the kiln when it was exposed to air, and you get these red lines. That is not what it should look like, and it shouldn't have all these little spaces, and it's just a horrifying vase. So, um, you know, if you want a decoration, fine. But if you want a real vase, real authentic vase, this isn't it. There are not a lot of Guangxu pieces floating around. They don't turn up very often. Next we have this. These copies of Big Yuan and early Ming pieces are turning up everywhere. They're fairly easy to copy. And because the value of these is so high on the real ones, this face were it authentic would be worth in the millions. Uh, there's, of course, uh, a lot of guys trying to make them to launch a few of them into the market, hoping to catch a couple of suckers. Uh, the first thing you want to look at, again, segregate the elements, the design elements in your mind, and look at that flower. And then go look at a real one. The petals aren't done very well. Uh, the scale is a bit off. It looks like it was drawn, you know, rather amateurishly. Yuan painters were extremely skilled, did a beautiful job. Uh, but then you have this, this sort of odd decoration of a, of a lotus, I guess he's trying to do here. And uh, it's all nicely laid out. The scale is, you know, is, is pretty good. And then you have the Buddha symbols. and this famous pattern here that you see also around the outsides of plates, but it's clearly uh, a, a copy. And uh, the masks on the ends are uh, off. There's a better shot of it. Again, they've, they've tried to make this look like it was over-fired in the kiln, you know, the cobalt burned on the surface. And then you get around to the feet. Let's pull that foot up here. There you go. Again, the reddish foot, um, which is partly intentional, partly uh, done actually in the firing when they made these. The foot is roughly the style of the real feet, but it's off. And you need to look at a lot of them to know. This guy's trying to get 18,000 for it. He is located in the United States. Shame on him. And then you have this. This is a uh, very famous type of blue and white. They appear in major auction houses and medium-sized auction houses, and they bring a lot of money. It's a Yongshen period garlic neck cobalt blue vase. It's got the high foot, it's got the garlic neck. The drawing, again, is too stiff. 
the paste is not white enough um, and uh, there's the mark it's not a very good job on the mark the foot again has this sort of modern look at the foot forget the mark look at the mar the interior of the foot without the mark it has a very modern look to it you have this fake wear where they've dragged it over some tabletops for five or ten minutes to make it look good and uh, there's a side shot heaping and piling but very mechanical, very rote, very manufactured looking. Okay, so that's a few things to look at while you're out there. And always try to, when you, when you see one of these fakes, imagine in your mind how you'd react to it if you encountered it, you know, if you live in the Midwest somewhere and you're in a little group shop and there one is. Well, they're appearing in places like that. They're turning up in little auction halls. So you can be very careful. You're not likely to encounter one at this point, given all of the attention that's being paid to Chinese antiques. So bear it in mind, all right? And, uh, you know, keep your powder dry until you have something where you can verify its age. And uh, thanks for visiting our site. Next, Until next time, have a great, great week, and uh, goodbye.